Um, so I can uh, introduce myself quick. Um, Joe, I'm an engineer at Spotify based in New York. I've uh, been working on Backstage for uh, about six or seven months now. Uh, so today I wanted to give an update on the auth framework, uh, show how to set it up for your, your Backstage app, uh, and do a demo on how you might write a policy uh, to define your authorization roles. Uh, so let me just share my screen real quick. Okay. So uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Uh, all right. So yep, as I said, I'll do an overview and uh, provide a demo. So I have a couple slides uh, just to introduce the framework. So why did we uh, implement this authorization framework? Backstage has a bunch of ways to authenticate into the app through all the different auth providers. So we have Google, GitHub. Uh, so we have a way of telling Backstage who you are, but there hasn't been a way to use this identity to decide uh, what you have access to and what you can, what actions you can take in the app. So this has been a blocker for some adopters. Uh, it's been a highly requested feature from the community. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we wanted to account for is Backstage's flexibility, which we think is its superpower. So we want this framework to be open for extension. Uh, we don't want to tie adopters down to a specific approach to authorization like RBAC or ABAC. So what is it? Uh, so the framework uh, uses a, uh, a model where all of your rules are defined in one centralized place. Uh, we're calling that place the authorization policy. Uh, so this, this policy is flexible. So it's just an async function. It takes a permission and a user and returns some decision. So because it's async, you can do whatever you need to do in there. You can uh, call to an external system. You can read from the database, uh, whatever whatever you need to make that authorization decision. Uh, it's also democratized, so uh, plugin authors can integrate support for this on their own without updating the Backstage core. Adopters can add their own permissions and integrate them uh, separately. Uh, so it's uh, we, don't, we don't need to uh, iterate on this one piece. Uh, we can really build it uh, all in independent uh, locations. All right, so I'll jump over to the demo now. So I already have a uh, backstage running. Uh, so just to provide some context on what I've done to set up the app so far. So I ran uh, the backstage create app script uh, using uh, Postgres as the database. I created a catalog entity for myself and added myself to team A. Uh, and I've also configured the GitHub sign-in provider uh, and implemented a sign-in resolver to add some uh, ownership claims to my authorization token. So the ownership claim is, is just saying that I have a, a claim to my user entity and the group that I'm a member of, uh, just to map that to the right catalog entities. Uh, all right, so this should look familiar. Uh, this is just the, the catalog landing page. I can see all the components, uh, even the components that I don't own. Uh, I can click into a component that I don't own. And I can even go up and unregister it. So I'll just I'll do that to demonstrate. So uh, we we actually uh, I'm going to show like what what it would look like to restrict that behavior a little bit more. Uh, so maybe we don't want uh, to give the capability to everybody to unregister a component. Uh, so let's go through the process to uh, setting that up. So I'm going to jump into VS code, uh, and we're going to start in the app config. So the first thing you need to do is uh, turn on the authorization framework. So you do that by setting the permission enabled flag to true. Uh, and this is just telling the, the framework to start sending authorization requests. Right now, uh, we skip the auth requests uh, sort of as an optimization for anybody who doesn't want to use it. And also while we iterate on this, and it's, it's not enabled by default. Next thing you need to do is uncomment these lines for the backend auth keys. So this enables backend to backend auth, which is a prerequisite for the permission framework. This, this is a way for backends to identify themselves to other backends, uh, which is necessary. So the auth framework knows when a request is coming from a user versus from a, a server. 
Uh, so you can imagine like the catalog uh, ingestion process uh, that needs some uh, advanced capabilities, uh, doesn't want to, we don't want to restrict it based on the auth rules in our policy. Uh, so it'll use the server token for that. Okay, so that should be it for the app config. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is change into the back end package. And I'm going to add the plugin permission back end. Uh, so this is the, the new back end plugin that will uh, handle all of these authorization requests from other, other back end plugins and from the front end app. So while I'm installing that, I'll go over and start creating the new module for the permission plugin. And this has already been integrated with the example app in the main backstage repo. So I'm just going to go and take that code and copy it in as a starting point. So the, the policy in, in this example is just implemented inline. You could do this in a separate package and import it. Uh, it just needs to be some function or, or class that you plug into the policy parameter uh, to the create router call. So this is called allow all permission policy because that's what it does. Uh, but we're going to make some changes to that. So I'll rename it here. I'll just call it demo policy. And because this doesn't use any of the parameters yet, I'm just going to, uh, the parameters to the handle function, I'm just going to delete that. and. Uh, let the editor fill those in for me. So as you can see, we uh, for this handle function, we take a request, uh, which is a policy authorized query. This contains that permission and some information about what the user is trying to do. Uh, and it also takes a user object, which is a backstage identity response, uh, and that has uh, the user's auth token and their uh, their claims. This also needs to be an async function. So uh, I mentioned that I wanted to restrict the behavior of uh, the unregister capability. So in, in order to do that, uh, we're going to look at the what permission is being requested. So we'll look at request.permission.name. And when name equals catalog entity delete, which is the permission that we've created to represent this unregister action. Then we're going to return a decision, which just has a result of deny. Uh, and since this policy is only handling the uh, delete case, we want to have a fallback uh, to cover everything else. So we'll keep that uh, allowed by default behavior. All right, so at this point, the policy should deny any action to delete catalog entities, and it should allow everything else. So I'll change back up to my root directory, and I'll start the app again. Oh, no, I actually did forget uh, a couple other steps. Uh, so we created the permission module, but we need to wire that up with our uh, backend app router. Uh, so we'll jump over to the backend index file. Uh, and just like the other plugins, we'll uh, import it. And we'll create the environment for it. And then we'll uh, connect it to the router. And there's one other thing we have to do in this file. Uh, I mentioned while I was updating the app config that we need to enable backend to backend auth. And one of the uh, one of the steps to doing that is to replace the no op server token manager uh, to the uh, default implementation. So uh, there's just a factory method for that. So you can say server token manager from config, 
and then we can just pass in our logger there. So that should be all I need to do uh, to get this working here. I might just need to sign out and sign back in. All right. So this should look the same, but uh, we want to make sure that the disable capability or unregistered capability is no longer available. So as you can see, the button is now disabled. Um, and uh, just to show, so this is team A. I'll go to another one uh, that is owned by a different user. Uh, and that is disabled there as well. So that's great. We've, uh, we've blocked that action. But that wasn't exactly what we were trying to do because now no user can unregister a component. Uh, but we, what we wanted to do was actually uh, disable this capability unless you're the owner of the component. Uh, so let's go back into the policy and show how to do that. Uh, so you, you've seen the allow result and the deny result. And we have one more type, which is called a, a conditional. So a conditional decision is a way of deferring the evaluation back to the plugin that uh, owns that permission. Uh, so this is a way of supporting use cases where we don't have all the information necessary in, in the policy. And uh, we, we want to let the plugin uh, take the rules that we've defined and apply them itself. Uh, so in this case, we can't, we can't really figure out if the requesting user is an owner of uh, the entity that they're trying to act on. So we'll build a conditional decision to represent that. So we have some helpers to do this. So one of them is called create catalog policy decision. Uh, and this helper is kind of just an abstraction and uh, it'll produce the conditional results object for you. Uh, you could also do that uh, by hand, but these helpers are nice because uh, it kind of hides the, the internals of this and uh, lets us uh, iterate on them without needing to make uh, too many breaking changes. Uh, it's also a little bit easier to break these out uh, using the helpers. So we're, we're doing a conditional decision. Uh, and the, the there's one other helper that I'll import, and that's called catalog conditions. So catalog conditions is an object that defines all of the uh, conditions that the catalog plugin supports. Uh, so as you can see, we can uh, we can use conditions based on whether an entity has an annotation, uh, whether it has a label, some metadata, uh, if it's a certain entity kind. And in this case, we're going to want to use the is entity owner condition. Uh, and this condition needs one parameter, and that's a list of claims. Uh, so it needs to know who, who the user is in order to figure out if they're the, uh, the owner of the entity. Uh, so we'll just pass in the ownership entity claims uh, from the user object. And since users can be anonymous, uh, we just need to provide a fallback. So we'll just do an empty array. So that's saying that if uh, a user is logged in, we'll, we'll provide their ownership entity refs uh, and use those to determine if they're the owner. Otherwise, it'll be empty and uh, they won't match to any entities. All right. So I will uh, jump back to the app here. I'll refresh. Uh, and let's go into a component that I own. So you can see now that the unregister action is enabled. And I can do this for owned components. I'll go back to a component that I don't own. And it's disabled. So. Uh, hopefully that demonstrates sort of the, the flexibility in these uh, conditional decisions. Um, but let's uh, let's layer on some some additional logic. So I've restricted that uh, that certain action, but uh, what about like visibility? So right now I can see all the components that I own and I can see components that I don't own. Uh, but if I'm in an organization that uh, is a little bit more restrictive and I only want people to see what they own. Uh, then uh, I might want to set up a filter to do that or uh, auth rule to do that. So I'll jump back to the policy and I will add uh, another block here. And we will check for the 
read permission this time. So since we're using the same rules, I'll just copy this uh, conditional decision uh, down to this block and I'll save. So now we're, we should be doing the same thing for uh, deleting entities and reading entities. So going back to the app, I'll refresh. And now I can only see the, the components that I own. Uh, so that was very helpful. Uh, but uh, as you can see, I've enumerated both of these permissions and you can see how this might like grow as you want to uh, support uh, more, more of these catalog permissions. Uh, it might not scale that well. So one way that you can simplify this is to combine these two, uh, uh, these two blocks into a single check against what's called a resource type. So the framework provides a way for uh, permissions to define an associated resource type. So in the case of catalog permissions, the associated resource is always a catalog entity. So what we can do here is check if the request permissions resource type is catalog entity. And if it is, we'll just use that same logic uh, to restrict the action to owners only. And we can delete these two blocks now that we have one consolidated rule for this. Uh, and another benefit here is that this will apply to uh, any permission that's using the catalog entity as its resource type. So this might scale a little better as uh, you, you bring in new plugins that are using uh, the catalog as a resource, uh, or if new permissions get added to the catalog, uh, they should be uh, ready to go with this policy. Uh, just to tie things back together, I'll go back and refresh to show that uh, this still behaves as expected. Cool. Um, so that was uh, that was all I wanted to show for the, the policy demo. I guess just to uh, wrap things up, um, we are we're still working on integrating the framework with uh, some of the core plugins. Catalog is mostly done, and, and Tech Docs is set up, and, and Search is still in progress. Uh, and our main focus coming up is to get the documentation in a good place uh, so that everybody else can start implementing this for production. Uh, but as you as you saw, I actually did all of this off of the uh, create app. So all of this code is on master right now. So if you're interested, uh, you can play around with the stuff. Uh, we would love to hear your thoughts. If you have use cases that you don't think are supported, uh, that's especially useful. Um, uh, we want to make sure that this can work for everybody. So please uh, try this out. Let us know what you think. Um, follow up on the disc, the new Discord channel called uh, Permissions, which we just created. Uh, so if you have any follow-up questions, uh, that would be the place to go. Um, uh, just one other note, I guess, uh, the if you are going to uh, try this out, we don't recommend using this in production yet, uh, just because the, the documentation isn't fully there yet, and we're, uh, we're still making some changes. Uh, so it, it's uh, probably better to uh, try this out locally, do a, doing a little experiment uh, and providing feedback that way. But yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for your time.